This is a lecture on Critical Path Method. This lecture is part of the open online course on project management organized by Professor Alemi. The purpose of the Critical Path Method, or CPM, is to finish a project in the shortest amount of time. The CPM method allows us to quantify progress towards the project's end and to be able to report how various events will lead to changes in the project end date. The CPM method is a formal and mathematical analysis of the shortest way of finishing a project. It is not appropriate for all projects. The critical path method is especially good for complex, multitask projects in which there are many ways of sequencing the tasks. In these situations, a formal analysis of sequence of the tasks could save a great deal of time. An additional formal analysis and presentation of the findings would go a long way in communicating the details of the project to various stakeholders. The main disadvantage of the approach is the extent to which the various details have to be looked after. CPM requires assessment of duration of each task and interdependencies among tasks. Some project managers, especially those who are dealing with small-scale projects, prefer to model through the tasks without formally assessing the duration of each task. They may prefer to act spontaneously and decide what to do next as opposed to plan activities ahead of time. But as projects get more complex, the number of people involved increases and the importance of formal planning and optimal scheduling increases as well. Resource-oriented schedules sequence tasks because of limited access to resources needed to complete a task. For example, construction of a wing of the hospital may be delayed because the large equipment needed to for doing so is in use in another part of the construction. Time-oriented schedules focus only on precedent relationships among tasks. A precedence relationship indicates that a task cannot start until other tasks are done. For example, training of, s of staff on how to use an EHR or electron electronic health record cannot start until the EHR system has been implemented and configured. A critical path chart has several elements. First, it includes a set of well-defined activities. By well-defined, we mean activities that have clear start and end characteristics. These activities should be mutually exclusive with no overlap. The description of activities must be clear to project team members. Here is a list of activities one might engage in to survey patients and find out their satisfaction with care. These activities include selecting the survey tools, printing the tool, obtaining a list of patients, sampling from the list, mailing the surveys to selected patients, collecting responses, and analyzing the data. Each activity is assigned a unique letter so as to easily refer to it within the network structure. For each activity, we also n need to know what must be accomplished before the activity can start. This is referred to as a precedence. A critical path chart shows both the activities and their precedence. Not that in this example we are saying that we cannot print the survey until we have selected the survey tool, or that we cannot sample from the list of patients until we have obtained the list, or that we cannot mail the survey until we know who should receive it. What the precedence structure described in this example says is that we cannot analyze the data until we have collected it. Of course, we can't analyze the data if the surveys have not been mailed to the patients, but we do not need to show this as a precedence for analyzing the data as it is a precedence for collecting responses. In a precedence table, we show only the immediate precedence. For each activity, we also need to know its duration and the resources needed to accomplish it. The critical path method uses information and precedence and duration of activities to arrive at an optimal schedule for the task. 
Here we see all the elements that go into a critical path chart in the form of a precedence table. In this example, we show the duration of each task on the right column of the table. These data, for example, tell us that it may take a month to receive responses back from patients. A critical path chart, of course, is not a listing or a table. It is a visual chart, often in the form of a network. We now turn to see how these data are displayed. These are two visual ways of displaying critical path charts. Activity on branch and activity on node This figure shows a chart where activities are in the nodes. The arrows show the precedence st structure. Each node is connected to its immediate precedence. One could follow the arrows backwards to find what is required for each task and follow it forwards to see what task is next. Note that in this example, task C, which is mailing the surveys, requires us to have completed two other tasks task B, printing a survey, and task D, selection of recipients. Task B and D are not linked. They can occur simultaneously. This figure shows a chart where activities are on the branches. The arrows show the completion of an activity. Each node shows the sequence of start or end of the activity. One could follow the nodes to identify which activities have to start when. In this example, task E, mailings of the surveys, is the fifth task to start. All other four tasks need to be completed before it can, sta it can start. Let's return to the activity in node chart we had presented earlier. This time, we show the duration of each activity on the arrows from each node. The discovery of the critical path is done through calculating earliest start and finish times from each node, beginning from the start point and moving forward. This is called the forward pass. The backward part pass calculates latest start and finish times for each activity. The critical path is then identified from the difference of the earliest time it can start and the latest time it can finish. This difference is called slack time. The critical path is the path where the earliest start and the latest finish time are the same and therefore there is no slack in these tasks. A delay in these tasks leads to a delay in the entire project.